My name is Charles Lee. I'm a professor here at the Stanford GSB, and I have about 10 minutes to tell you about Chinese reverse merger firms. Um, you may have noticed that the Chinese companies that list in the U.S. recently have run into some bad press. Um, there's been a fair bit of this, uh, mostly having to do with accounting frauds. Uh, all, throughout last year, and um, there has been just a sequence of um, newspaper articles about Chinese companies who uh, somehow took a shortcut to Wall Street, which they refer to as a reverse merger. Uh, and what is a reverse merger? It's a private company uh, merging with a public company, and the private company's management team ends up controlling the combined publicly traded company. So a private company that wants to list, um, instead of going through an IPO, buys an empty shell, a company that is already dormant but is publicly listed. Uh, and uh, the eventual public company is controlled by, by the operating company. So even though if, uh, on the on the, it looks like the public company has purchased the private company, the, the private company actually has gone public. It's been called a backdoor listing because you could actually uh, get a private company listed in a public uh, exchange without going through an IPO and all the rigor and the cost of an IPO. Now, how, does this, how did the Chinese companies get uh, mixed up in all this bad press? Well, there's been a large surge of Chinese companies that have gone public in the U.S. over the last 10 years. Most of them have done so through a reverse merger. So between 2001 and 2010, about 85% of the foreign reverse mergers in the U.S. That have, got, that have actually raised funds in, China, in the U.S. were from China. And uh, in the last half of the, de of the decade, last decade, three quarters of all the reverse mergers from China, I mean, so all of the Chinese companies that public listed were reverse mergers. And uh, a lot of them got in hot water in 2011 when the SEC issued a warning, general warning, against investing in Chinese companies using reverse mergers. And according to a list we obtained from the China Ministry of Finance, uh, of the 34 cases that the SEC is investigating on US listed Chinese companies for potential security fraud, 30 of them were reverse mergers. Okay, so um, things got also pretty interesting because of the short sellers. There's been a number of high profile reports that were issued by short sellers who first take a short position in a Chinese stock and then uh, announce uh, that they believe it's a fraud. And uh, some of them are genuine frauds and some of them it's less clear. Uh, some examples, uh, Muddy Waters Research uh, issued a, uh, a negative report on Sinoforest, a Toronto listed reverse merger company in the business of forest plantation in China. It was issued in June 2nd. The stock dropped 82% on the, on the issue. Uh, Muddy Waters has publicly announced it has a short position, so it profited quite well. Uh, this turned out to be, it turns, seems a pretty reasonable call because a year later, um, the company was, in fact, in, in receivership, and um, the Ontario Security Commission has recently charged its former uh, uh, officials with fraud. Later on, another example is uh, November 21st, Muddy Waters issued a report on Focus Media, an internet advertising agency. That one didn't turn out so clear because even now, Focus Media is fighting this argument. The stock dropped by 40% on the, on, the, on the short report, but um, Focus Media has just announced it's going to buy back all its shares. It's going to go private because it really thinks that it was a, an unfair report. It was distorted. Muddy Waters is not the only short seller. Capital Research, Citron Research has issued over 20 reports on Chinese companies since 2006. And according to their website, 16 of them have suffered catastrophic losses of 66% or more. So are these whistleblowers or opportunists? Well, there's been a lot of backlash in the last few weeks. Uh, in fact, Xinhua, the Chinese uh, official news service, issued an editorial saying that China US companies are poisoning the reputation of Chinese startups for profit. Uh, they claim these are malicious acts. Mr. Kai Fu Li, uh, who is a former executive at Google's, uh, along with 60 other uh, executives and business people in China, 
started a website called Citron Fraud in which they argue that Citron is just simply uh, tarnishing the reputation of Chinese companies. Uh, they write reports that boldly tell lies, I'm quoting them, okay, knowing that their American readers have no way of verifying them. Okay. So how bad are Chinese reverse merger companies? And we, our paper looks at all of the Chinese re reverse mergers that were issued from 2001 to 2011 and ask how bad are they as a group. Uh, there, is one, uh, there is one view that says they're clearly awful. We know the Chinese have corporate governance problems. We don't trust their pet food and their toys. Why should we trust their public companies? Um, and uh, we think, obviously, they, these guys came into the U.S. market through the back door. They obviously are the weaker ones. They didn't go through the IPO process. Plus, we've got so many examples already. How many bad apples do we need? So it's an open and shut case. They, they're just awful. But if you think carefully, there are actually a number of reasons why this may not be so obvious. First of all, there's actually no systematic evidence on their collective performance. We've seen some vivid examples, but we don't know how they've done as a group. And second of all, to the extent we've seen them compared, we've compared them, the, the media and others have compared these uh, reverse mergers to IPOs. IPOs are a very different animal. They're much more liquid. That's why they IPO'd. Reverse mergers normally didn't have the eligibility to become IPOs. They had tighter, finan tighter financing constraints. They're early stage companies. The right comparison set is reverse mergers, not IPOs. And so, in fact, it may not be so obvious. In fact, China has a lot of very uh, potentially attractive startups and many and access to capital, uh, until very recently at least in China, for these startups is much more limited than in the US. It could be that we're drawing from a better quality pool of candidates when we look at Chinese reverse mergers. So here's what we do. We look at all of the reverse mergers that became active in, t in the last decade, both US and foreign. We compare them to a control set of companies that are matched on the same date, same industry, same size, based on the same exchange. This is important because 80% of the reverse mergers show up first in, in bulletin board, OTC bulletin boards or pink sheets. So we match them first by companies in the same exchange, then in the same industry, then in the same date, and the closest by size. And we look at their initial health, and then we look at their health over the next three years both in terms of financial operations and in terms of stock performance. And here's what we find. Three key results. One, reverse mergers are risky. As a group, they tend to be small, illiquid, highly prone to default, and over 50% of, 50 of them on day one actually have going concern qualifications. You know, the auditors say, we don't know whether this thing's gonna be around. 50% of them. So the first thing we found is that they're risky. The second thing we found is, so are the matching control firms. Guess what percentage of matching confirm, control firms have going concern qualifications on day one? I mean, during the same day, during the year, 50%. And it turns out that when you look at everything from leverage, liquidity, profitability, cash flows, percentage of uh, audit qualifications, Z scores for financials, and stock returns, these reverse mergers and control firms are not really no, uh, that different. In other words, reverse mergers actually control, actually fare a little better than their control firms. And the third and most interesting to us is that the Chinese reverse mergers are generally healthier. They fare better, they perform better in returns, in all of these measures. It's true on day one, it is true three years later. Even though in our sample there's a large number of Chinese reverse mergers that are made the press. So even including them, oh, I still have two minutes. You are so kind. This lady runs my life here, so, all right. Okay, so I have two more minutes. That means I can actually show you a couple of uh, slides. So those are the three main results, Kim. Um, we have 400 some reverse mergers. Uh, you probably don't wanna look at all these numbers. It's better look at pictures, but uh, let me just, so uh, reverse mergers are, when, once you control for reverse mergers and control, once you control for size, industry, exchange, um, and date, the reverse mergers are very similar in terms of their leverage, their current ratio, in terms of their operate ROAs, cash flows, and financial distress scores. They are just basically a risky bunch, but so are the control firms. The striking thing is that the Chinese reverse mergers on day one have lower leverage, better, better uh, current ratios, better uh, return on assets, better cash flow from operations, better Z scores, 
and only 23% of them have going concern qualifications versus 60% of the U.S. reverse mergers. This is the survival rate and exchange venue for uh, Chinese reverse mergers versus U.S. reverse mergers. So about half the sample were U.S. and, and half the sample were foreign, and of the foreign, 85% are Chinese. When you look at this, basically 55% of the Chinese reverse mergers over the next three years tend to move up, that is from a pink sheet to an over-the-counter or from over-the-counter to a national market system, or are acquired, versus 19 or 20% for the U.S. Uh, and when you look, the ones that move down, there are far more U.S. than there are Chinese. So um, we looked at a whole lot of things, and we're accountants, you know, so we look at a lot of numbers. But we, we also did things like difference and difference. So let's control, let's look at the Chinese compared to their control group, and then look at the difference between those two, and then look at the American reverse mergers and the control group, and look at the difference between them, and look at the difference in difference. The results basically hold the Chinese reverse mergers, even after controlling for size and other things, tend to do better. Um, it's true in returns. It's true in a whole lot of these things. So let me summarize. Reverse mergers are risky, but so are the other companies in that little space they play because the risk you see is endemic to that environment. And finally, the Chinese reverse mergers actually are healthier from what I can tell.